Wisdom of Emily Dickinson knows no bounds. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one being the Emily Dickinson playlist. Number two being the ever-growing poetry discussion playlist here on the channel. The poem in question today is a short one, and guys, these are the poems that give me the most trouble with Emily Dickinson. Very enigmatic very condensed, very difficult to <clears throat> extrapolate, if you will, a, a whole lot of talking points from them, sometimes for myself, obviously not in general, because there is so much packed into such a short literary event as a four-line Emily Dickinson poem. The question today is locus of control, at least so far as I can tell. Now, We'll get into that towards the end of this discussion, but let's start with the poem, a breakdown, and sort of maybe, I don't want to offer a direct interpretation, but a way that this poem can be applied in your life, in my life, in life in general, that is what poetry is for. The poem in question is known as Not Knowing When the Dawn Will Come, and it reads as such. Not knowing when the dawn will come, I open every door. Or has it feathers like a bird, or billows like a shore? So, the um, here's where I want to start with this poem. The dawn. So, not knowing when the dawn will come. What is the dawn? <clears throat> Well, th this is where your literary interpretation will begin, right? For what are you searching in your life? I think that this, this, this word, this poem, this phrase is wide and varied. It is something that is applicable in many ways, and we have to understand how we are going to translate this in order to really work this poem into ourselves. So what does dawn entail? Dawn is light, not knowing when the light will come. I open every door, not knowing when the morning will come. What does the morning mean? Is the morning just a new start? One of the things that we run into time and again in these poetry discussions is the discussion of the life scale. Oftentimes, when you are interpreting a poem, morning can mean early in life. It can mean the onset of life the same way that the spring can on the year scale. But it doesn't have to be the beginning of a new day or the beginning of a new year. It can mean basically just a new start in general for you as a person. How many of us have gotten to a point in life where we need a new beginning, where we need a new start, where we need some change to our world? That uh, that can happen simply from making a decision, which our protagonist, our speaker here, has decided to do. I need a new beginning, and I go searching. I open every door. What is that new beginning? We all have in our life right now this need. Whether it's a new beginning, whether it's finding love, whether it's getting out on your own, whether it is waking up and wanting to feel okay, whether it is success for which we are seeking, whatever that thing is, <coughs> pardon me, whatever that thing is, it is. It does not have to be constant. It can be if, if we do not find the answer for which we are searching. But whatever that is in our life, it is represented by the dawn here. Our speaker goes and opens every door. This is emblematic of ourselves going and searching in our own lives, taking proactive steps. I need this thing, the dawn. And so I will begin the journey. The next line, or has it feathers like a bird, 
Is this thing for which I am searching, is it steadfast like the rising sun? Will it always come up in the same place? Will it always be there? So it, the idea of searching for the door which will allow you the dawn, the dawn will basically always come essentially from the same place, right? Searching for that door with the dawn means I will go searching for the door which allows me the best vantage point for the dawn. Not necessarily to see the sun, but maybe to see the best view that dawn will allow. To concede that this might instead be something that has feathers like a door, or feathers like a bird, not feathers like a door, that'd be a strange door. Feathers like a bird from this thing that for which I am searching, it might not come at a given door, but that might be where it is. If this thing for which we are searching is not like the sun, is not like the dawn in general, but instead like a bird, then wherever we find it, that is the thing. Not the vantage point, not the outlook, but the thing for which I am searching. This, if it is like a bird as opposed to the rising sun, it will be more fickle. It might not be at the same door every morning. We might have to find it someplace else every time we find it. And this also suggests that the thing for which we are searching is searching for itself. The sun does not wait for you to feed it. That bird is out there looking for its own breakfast. The early bird gets the worm. If it is fickle like a bird, if it does take flight of its own accord, it becomes a much more difficult search. Or billows like a shore. Billows like a shore, does it have these waves that come in and go out? Is it constant and fluid? Or is it steadfast or is it fickle? The wisdom that I'm speaking of when I talk about this poem is oftentimes, almost always, almost exclusively, when you have a poem about something like this, it is either the person is searching for something or it is something has left. Emily Dickinson in this poem is giving us the wisdom that probably what it is in your life is both. It's going to take you searching, but it's also going to take that other thing coming to its own, um, its own conclusions, its own places, its own vantage points. And that's where I want to really dig into this poem. What I want to talk about here is something called locus of control. Most poems are either internal locus of control or external locus of control. What is an internal locus of control? Individuals with an internal locus of control believe that they have significant control over their own actions and the outcomes of those actions. They attribute their success and failures to their own efforts, decisions, and abilities. There certainly is some of this in life. There is some of this to be had from a search. There is certainly some of this to be had from solving a problem. Characteristics of people who have an internal locus of control, self-efficacy, high belief in one's ability to influence events and outcomes, responsibility, take, res take personal responsibility for their achievements and setbacks, and setbacks being possibly more, more important than achievements in this part of the conversation, but also motivation, often more motivated to take initiatives and work towards goals, believing their actions make a difference. An external locus of control, poetry that says something about my love has left me or the world has, has gone to pot, etc. Individuals with an external locus of control believe that external factors such as luck, fate, other people's actions are more influential in determining their own life outcomes. They feel less control over their destiny and more subject to external forces. 
uh, the characteristics of people with external locus of control, dependency may rely on external validation and perceive their efforts as less impactful. Blame, more likely to attribute blame or success attribute successes or failures to external factors rather than personal effort and resilience may experience less motivation uh, to change their own circumstances feeling outcomes are beyond their control this poem takes into account both an external and an integral internal locus of control it is saying to us simply look you have to put in your own effort to find what it is that will change your life, what it is that will make you happy, what it is that will happy, successful, whatever the, the, the consequence may be of this thing. This poem, taking into account both internal and external, means that in the wrong circumstance, you may search and never find an answer. That's life. You may search for success. You may do all of the right things and not have that one stroke of luck. You may do all of the right things and never come to the right conclusion. That's an external locus of control. Or, or it's kind of, it, it's, it's real life, really. But having an internal locus of control allows you to constantly search for that answer as our speaker seems to be doing here. The external factor of this of, of control is that the answer might not present itself. You've heard the phrase, the 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 successful something like this, right? The successful are always ready for luck, and, and that has to be true because the opportunity may not itself always be there. But if you were always prepared for it then you will probably, possibly, always, you may find it. If you are not always ready, it is almost certainly the case that you will not find that thing. Emily Dickinson being able to put together four lines, four lines that, uh, that communicate this in such an exquisite fashion is incomparable, but it is a lesson in life itself. And um, that's something for which we have to constantly thank Emily Dickinson. Um, this idea that whatever it is that you're searching for, the search has to be constant. Because the opportunity may not present itself. That is all I have for these four short lines from Emily Dickinson. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out. Um, if you find yourself here by chance but not design, hitting the uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you will be here for other poetry discussions in the future. There's poetry on the channel every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.